G'day guys and welcome to this business management lesson. In today's lesson, we're looking at key knowledge point 427. That is unit four, area of study two, and the seventh key knowledge point for this area of study. Today specifically, we're looking at the key principles of the three-step change model by Lewin. And yes, that is the same Lewin that we've talked about previously. Now Lewin's three-step change model is a model for how businesses should approach change. Lewin's theory around this model is that businesses that follow these three steps are always going to be able to implement change effectively. That is to say, change cannot fail if you follow these three steps. Those three steps are unfreeze, change, and refreeze. The first step, unfreeze, is about preparing your business for change. And this is where Lewin's force field analysis has a bit of overlap with this theory. Part of the unfreeze step would be a business identifying the driving forces that will support the change and the restraining forces that will uh, present a barrier to the effective implementation of a change. The unfreeze stage is about preparing the business for change. So anything that needs to be done to increase the odds of success for change is done in the unfreeze step. The model of the three-step change theory is described using terminology reminiscent to the idea of trying to set an object inside an ice cube. If you're trying to set, get something like a pea or a snow pea inside an ice cube, it's much, much easier to do if the first thing you do is unfreeze the ice cube. If it gets melty, if it becomes a puddle of water, it's going to be much easier for you to put that pea in the center of the ice cube than it is if you've got a solid block of ice and you're trying to smoosh a pea against the side. So taking that idea, the unfree stage is about preparing for the change. The term unlearn is something Lewin uses in the publications where he describes this three-step change model. And there specifically, he's talking about preparing employees who as a process or as part of the change will have to learn new behaviors to identify what's wrong with what they're already doing. If someone just comes along to you and tells you to do something differently, uh, say your boss comes along to you at work or one of your teachers comes along to you at school and tells you uh, to throw away what you're doing and do it a different way, you're probably going to be less prepared to take that on board than if they take the time to explain to you why what you're doing now isn't working. If your teacher comes to you and says, hey, you've been taking a lot of notes just by uh, pausing in lessons, or perhaps if you're watching these videos, if you're just pausing and writing down what's on the slides behind me, you're probably missing a lot of stuff that I'm saying, which elaborates on those points. And that would be a pretty ineffective way to study. So if your teacher comes along and says, hey, stop pausing those videos and writing down what's on the thing, listen to what's being said, uh, because you're studying ineffectively, you're missing a lot of valuable things that's being said, you're more likely to take that on board than if they just came along and said, stop pausing. That's the sort of thing we're talking about with unlearn. It's helpful terminology, unlearn, to describe when an employee needs to be assisted to work out what's wrong with their behaviors uh, to overcome employee resistance in the context of giving them new instructions. If employees don't have to learn anything new as a result of the change, don't worry about unlearn, uh, but do focus on the identifying what needs to change, um, communicating the need for change to impacted stakeholders, uh, being able to demonstrate the need for change, and certainly identifying driving and restraining forces and implementing strategies to overcome the restraining forces and reinforce the driving forces. As it stands, the unfree stage is pretty much the most important. You can't proceed from this point until you've completed all of those responsibilities. And certainly if you don't unfreeze properly, Lewin says the successful implementation of change is much more up to chance than if you do your unfreezing properly. The second stage is the simplest, change, whatever it is. Once your business is unfrozen, if you're implementing a new strategy, if you're uh, implementing a new methodology in your business, if you're making significant recruitments or redeploying resources or restructuring, whatever the change is, do the change is step two. Not much more to say about it. Now, step three is refreeze. Going back to that analogy of trying to get a snow pea inside an ice cube, you unfreeze, you got a puddle of water, you put the pea in the middle and you whack it back in the freezer, you refreeze. Not only have you made the change by adding the pea to that puddle of water, but you have consolidated. 
you have made sure that that change is reinforced and very difficult to reverse. Refreezing is about following up and ensuring that people don't just regress back to their old way of doing things or slip back into whatever the old way was. It's about reinforcing and uh, establishing the change as something that will be ongoing. Certainly, uh, continuous support and ongoing training are very useful strategies that you can describe as being part of the refreeze stage to ensure that new practices are sustained. And certainly, evaluating KPI data is important at this point to determine whether or not you need to be making incremental changes uh, to um, support and reinforce the success of the change overall. In summary for this key knowledge point, yeah, it's a nice short one. Lewin's three-step change model describes best practice for a business that is pursuing change. Unfreeze, change, and refreeze are those three steps. Uh, certainly, Lewin says that a business that plans to uh, attack change in this way, a business that plans to unfreeze before they change and refreeze after they change, is positioned to increase the probability of their changes being successful uh, far beyond a business that relies far more on luck to implement their change successfully. That's all for today. See you next time.